This is Irili community. And like any other community, the people here have high demands for development. Good road network. We have electricity, we have pipe, bond water, and all what you can think of. Because to combine development in an area or civilization in an area, all these facilities are supposed to be in place. Then, job opportunity, social amenities, and all other good things that uh, operate where development yes. areas are. This local lawmaker believes he has the answers to these high demands from the people. We really have the largest deposit of bitumen in non state, alongside with uh, Agbabu. By the time they start exploiting, development will come. Like what we are not even thinking of, we still come to the place. We, it, will, it, will, it will enhance the economic of that land. Talk about revenue. Generate revenue for the state government, for the local government, for the federal government. All of us will be engaged to create job opportunity. A lot of this will happen. And the people of Irele couldn't have agreed more. Because it will provide a lot of employment for all the youths, all the unemployed in this area. Not in Irele alone, but all over the south and senatorial, even the whole of Ondo State. Uh, before they can tap the bitway or petroleum, I think they will provide good road. Electricity will come in. <laughs> good water will come in. So this is uh, something that uh, who bring a social amenity, bring a job opportunity to this community. Also, want, want to go to the sites of the basement pro um, project. You know, the optimism expressed by these people epitomizes their expectation from bitumen exploration. But most of them remain oblivious of the extent of damage it will have on their environment. Bitumen is very dirty, very dirty crude. You know, it's just, and then once you once you allow it to pollute an environment, it becomes very difficult to scrape the soil and uh, and restore that soil to its pristine uh, conditions. Alberta, Canada. What was once a flourishing forest with large swaths of pristine trees that sprawled across the landscape now looks more like a wasteland ravaged by the exploration of bitumen. Experts say that these lands may never be recovered again. There are two major ways of mining tar sands. One of them is in situ mining. Forget about the surface, right? Let us tap from beneath using in situ technology. You can pump chemicals, you can pump uh, hot water to liquefy this and then pump it out through another uh, channel. channel. But this method often requires substantial energy and water, thereby making the process all too expensive. And then, what is the cost of a barrel of bitumen in the world market? Why must you go through this stress? The second method, however, is a more preferred option, open surface mining. Here, first, the, the tar sands are very shallow. They are on the surface. You see them on the surface. They solidify during the rainy season when the temperature drops to like 20, 25, 26. But then during the dry season when the temperature climbs to 29, 30, you can see part of them flowing freely. For that one, the only way you can extract, you can exploit it, is by surface stripping, surface mining. I mean, because it's very shallow, um, and, and it's just some few meters thick. And then, because some few meters thick, you need to clear a large, area to be able to get uh, what you want. 
and it is the clearing of this large area for bitumen mining that is responsible for the Canadian moon landscape in Alberta. So how are you going to strip the landscape? How are you going to remove the landscape and, uh, and start exploiting? First, without removing the, the, um, the crops, without exposing the soil to a uh, direct uh, rainfall impact, exposing the soil to uh, denudation, erosion, and uh, degradation. And this may be the fate that awaits Irele community if bitumen exploration were to be carried out here. But even when equipped with this knowledge, the local indigenes are still adamant, citing the fact that the dividend of development which accompanies the exploration of bitumen will be more than enough to pay for the cost it may have on the environment. Mm, really, it will affect the community. But what people do in other places that uh, such things are, are done, I think the government will find the alternative or other things that will uh, help us so that we don't lose totally. If any company or your government want to embark on uh, explore, uh, exploration of uh, bitumen here, they, are most, uh, they must have conducted environmental assessments of the area so as to provide solution to all these effects. Are you telling me that there's no bad effect on, by, by tapping our uh, lampstone or our uh, kudoe? We have a way to protect it. They are, to, they are the one that will come and tell us that this is how to use to protect it. They will assist us now that we have been exposed to it on tap. But if they are tapping, they come with ideas, they come with technologies that this thing cause cancer, but we have to protect it. Then all of us will have to abide by whatever suggestion they might have given to us. There is no doubt that the exploration of bitumen will take a heavy toll on the ecosystem that is currently prevailing in this community. Water will be polluted, farmlands destroyed, large expanse of forest will be brought down, and communities will be relocated. Is this the kind of cost this community is willing to pay? Or could there be other developmental paths that this community can take that will have a more sustainable economic development? It is, it is, it is not bitumen that will give jobs. Okay. We don't have problems with that bitumen. Whether we exploit it now or we don't exploit it now, it's not the problem of Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria is leadership.